Good day, chaps. In today's video, we're going to cover another one of those odd, mysterious tanks that crop up online from time to time. It's the Centurion Mark III, with a 32 pounder anti tank gun fitted. In this video, we will discuss why it was fitted and what came beforehand. The origins of rigidly mounted tank guns can be traced back to the outset of the Second World War. But what do we mean by rigidly? Well, the concept is relatively simple. When a conventional tank gun fires, it follows those old Newtonian principles. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. When you shoot the pointy bits forward, the gun recoils backwards, and the force is recovered by buffers and reset. This recoil can be mitigated by the weight of the gun, ammunition charge, and other factors, but these are the basics. However, in tank design, this leaves us a problem, in that the gun's recoil and systems take up a lot of internal space and this fundamentally affects the overall design of the vehicle. The bigger the gun, and more powerful the ammunition, the more space is needed to accommodate this. And generally, the larger the turret needs to be. This, in turn, affects every other aspect, from crew positioning, elevation and depression limits, armour, weight, and so on. There are, however, a few ways around it. The first is recoilless guns, which still follow the same laws. However, rather than the gun recoiling, the gas is ejected out of the back, in such a way as to counter the recoil. But these are not suitable for use in enclosed spaces, for obvious reasons, but work well enough on external mounts. The second is to mount the gun rigidly, using the tank's own armour and weight to directly absorb the recoil, and hope that it's structurally strong enough to withstand it. This offers, theoretically, some very promising design choices. No longer do you need to add those pesky recuperators and buffers, or design a turret interior to accept the breach runout, or reduce the potential turret armour or shape around this fact. Nearly all the essential space in a turret is freed up. Sounds great. So why isn't it used more often? Well, therein lies a problem. In the early days it had a nasty habit of ripping itself apart, which is considered less than optimum. By fixing the gun rigidly onto the mantlet, all the energy of the recoil is now being transferred to the trunnions the surrounding armour, and the turret race, all of which are not designed to withstand this type of force and have a habit of transferring it into other squishier items, such as the radios and the crew, in the form of acceleration. But with some redesigns and a little tweaking, they found various solutions. During the war, the US, UK, and Germany tried to make this work. The Germans tried to implement rigidly mounted guns onto the 38 chassis, but with limited success. While a modified Churchill was recorded with a rigid two-pounder gun, the Americans had fitted a 75mm and later a 76mm recoilless mount into the GMC T-72, which proved successful, and later discussions were held to mount a similar system into the M4 Sherman. But besides a few firing tests and plans, nothing more was done in depth. After all, there was a war on. Post-war, however, things began to become a bit more interesting. In the UK, the first real attempt at making this work was by modifying a Sherman Firefly turret to take a rigid mounting in July 1945. After all, that whole tank's design had initially been hindered by the recoil issue, and so this was as good a vehicle as any. The modified turret was fitted to a rail track and fixed in place by measurement equipment and sent to Lulworth Rangers for testing, where delays owing to safety held it up. In the interim period, a team of engineers went over to Germany in August 1945 to interrogate German technicians on the subject. The German engineers, including Ubring Mellert, stated that they had been given instructions initially to mount the 88mm gun onto a Jagdpanther rigidly, but this had not been done and work focused on the 38 chassis referred to as the Beta in documents. However, their attempt while tested had not been too successful. However, they felt that mounting such a device on a turreted tank was not in their opinion feasible, and therefore had not been attempted. Back in the UK, the first trials on the modified Sherman were undertaken between the 22nd of November and the 6th of December 1945, at Lulworth, with a total of 45 rounds fired. It was quickly established that the turret race bolts were inadequate, but the turret ring itself had only shown small indentations, and the work should be continued on a Centurion Mark II turret with a 17-pounder mounting. A new test began with a Centurion II 
turret mounted on a similar bogey system in 1946. 142 rounds were fired, and the turret race and bolts withstood the shock, but research was stopped when the track and crane used were removed from Lulworth. Further trials were then carried out on a fully fitted tank at Shoeburyness, but due to the low priority of this research, no tests were done before 1951 when 186 rounds were fired. Centurion 03ZR03 had its normal turret removed and a modified turret to drawing 40032T fitted with a 17 pounder Mark VI gun rigidly mounted. The gun was held in a heavy clamp bolted and halved around the body by vertical securing bolts. This gun clamp was then secured to the mantlet by four horizontal bolts, and the mantlet was suspended by conventional Centurion trunnions. The vehicle was then fully fitted, and accelerometers were placed all over it to measure forces applied to the tank, the internal equipment, and the crew itself. After firing, it was found that the vehicle held very well with no obvious damage to the mantlet or turret race. The same was not, however, for the crew. So this leads us to today's vehicle, the 32-pounder Centurion. This project was first proposed in August 1954, with work starting the following year. However, unlike the previous vehicles, the intention was never to mount a 32-pounder into a Centurion for combat purposes, but rather test a new gun system for another project, Medium Gun Tank No. 2. Medium Gun Tank No. 2 was the forerunner of what would become Chieftain, but back in its early days it was a very much different vehicle. Aimed at being a 40-ton medium tank armed with a 105mm liquid propellant gun in a bifurcated turret. Liquid propellant guns had been extensively tested going back to the end of the war, in both the US and the UK. Work had been done with a variety of designs from the 6-pounder to the 17-pounder and 20-pounder. The idea was simple in theory. Rather than have a lot of ammunition cluttering up the tank, the rounds would be propelled by liquid explosives squirted into the breech, in either a single or a binary mix. This would enable much more space in the turret and be considerably safer, as the solution could be made to only react to a correct mixture and require an electric charge to detonate, and you didn't need to worry about shell ejection, and so on. In theory, it's an excellent concept, but in practice, it was found to be problematic, primarily in getting the mixture just right, so that when detonated, it expands evenly and correctly. This led to many trials where it worked, but the results were inconsistent, either firing with excessive energy or below what was expected, giving it RNG numbers that would make wargaming blush. Nevertheless, the scientific community felt that they were close on several occasions to getting this right, and if it worked, it would revolutionise tank design. Thus early plans were to have a 105mm LP gun fitted to the new tank, and due to the turret layout, this would need to be rigidly mounted. So they needed to test out what sort of recoil could be absorbed, and how this would impart itself onto the crew. Thus, they set about converting another Centurion Mark III, 03 zr 4 to fit a weapon rigidly that could be used to test the recoil energy imparted onto the tank, through a series of tests that would increase the charge, and indeed overcharge it, to reach the expected performance of the new 105mm gun. To do this, a 32-pounder gun was mounted to a new mantlet that was specifically designed for this purpose. The trunnions were enlarged to 5-inch types on either side, and the mantler increased to 342mm thick, or 13.5 inches, and the turret face was modified to hold the new mounting. The gun and turret were fully able to traverse, but due to the heavy muzzle mounting and balance issues, no stabiliser was fitted. Markings were placed around the tank, showing where the crew would be located, so outside high-speed photography could be first established on hull acceleration before any crew was placed inside. The vehicle was otherwise fully fitted with various leftover bits which were expendable. The most noticeable difference were the seats for crews benign made out of a new Dunlop rubber mix to absorb some of the predicted forces. The gun was then loaded with increasing charges from a few ounces up to 13 pounds. For the most part, the vehicle performed as expected, and the highest pressure achieved was 22 ton force per square inch, or 339 megapascals which is a little over the 310 found on the L52 105mm gun, 
the only issue being that the high-capacity shock blew out all of the periscopes and driver's vision blocks were shattered. Otherwise, the vehicle and tests were more or less as expected. However, with the change to medium gun tank number two, to a much more conventional vehicle, little further work was done, and the issues with liquid propellants, although tested until the 80s, petered out. Although the subject remains of interest today, due to much more advanced technology, the Centurion 32-pounder remains one of those interesting curiosities from the past. Well guys, that's it for today. This is only a brief synopsis of the project, but hopefully answers any questions. If you did like this, please give it a sub. I know UK stuff isn't everyone's cup of tea, and never will be as popular as German stuff, but hopefully we can continue to dig out the material the proper way and share it with you in the future.